when I see the state of the world as an empath, as an intuitive, as a light worker, sometimes other issues and challenges of the world feel bigger than my mind can comprehend. Yeah. And what happens is I move into this apathetic state of there's nothing that I can do. And that's not true. Our state of being, our vibration actually makes a difference on the planet. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember those things, that there may be something going on in another time zone or another part of the world, and it may feel too far outside of your backyard. But if you meditate and you visualize whatever color you want, purple, gold, pink, red, green, whatever it is, and then you wear that color and you go to the grocery store and you exude energy and you're kind to someone who reaches for a melon before you do, it <laughs> really does make a difference. You yeah. know, people are popping off on a plane right now on airplanes and going bonkers because they don't know what to do with their energy. Right. But if we set our energy, if we set our intention, if we visualize beautiful sparkling energy radiating from us, inviting the angels to join us on the journey for the day, it literally does make a difference. The fight is creation and it, it comes back to this conversation about creation versus consumption. And I asked my audience the other day, I was like, be honest, like I know you yeah. all are here, but are you more of a creator or are you more of a consumer? And I know you're a prolific creator, and I really believe that our, I'm gonna piggyback on this and come back to this, mm -hmm. but the great illness I think of our time is numbness. And we've numbed out for so many reasons, because of the pain, because of what's happening, because of the constant stream of fear. And so we've created this barrier between us and spirit, between us and our ability to create. And for me, the, the, the precipice, the creation point is really what's gotten me out of all of those victim narratives and really has stepped me into my power of being a creator. Like I've mm -hmm. always remembered that this is who we are. We're infinitely creative. And I'm not talking about necessarily just painting or music or all the things we think of as creative arts, but the ability to shape our lives and mm -hmm. to hear ourselves and to ultimately remember, you know, I think of like, I'm seeing the Russian doll in my head and right? at, the, at the center is like, you know, the absolute truth of who we are, but we have to keep breaking away at these other dolls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's kind of beautiful that new layers emerge all the time. Mm -hmm. These have been very helpful with me as someone who is very hard on myself in my twenties they always say celebrate it like if you see a pattern in yourself don't judge it because you'll just put the lid back on it celebrate the fact you're seeing it that means there's a layer coming off that means there's some some work you can do around it it's a, awareness is the biggest gift but so often there is this kind of belief of oh my god i thought i'd got rid of my uh, my feelings of rejection. No, you didn't. <laughs> there you go. There's a microcosmic example of that rejection wound again that's showing up in your life. And if each time it shows up, you love love it through yourself and mm -hmm. love your way through that process, then what you're describing becomes the journey. And that's great. I mean, I I don't always I don't always love it. No, I, I'd I love to skip to a few befriend, steps. <laughs> I've learned to befriend discomfort more than I ever used to be able to, but. But now I do have a different awareness when I'm going through something than I than I could have had a decade or 15 years ago. For me, it's a, it's a contingent on the spiritual maintenance, right through the day, right. So, yeah, my well-being, my presence in the world is contingent on the work that I do in the morning to prepare myself for the day. Sometimes you can start your day over, right. Mm -hmm. So, it is all about that and. It's awesome. I don't know. If I think, would I ever trade what I have today? Not in a million years. I love what I have. And I'm not rich, but I'm rich in my soul. If I'm having a conversation with someone, someone comes to me and says, so-and-so told me to call you because they said you would know how to help me. And then right. they start to tell me what happened. And they'll say, somebody called me up because I did this. And they said it was racist. And I go, well, I hate to break it to you, but that is racist. <laughs> and then they say, I'm not a racist. I didn't say you were a racist. Those people didn't say you were a racist. So it's important to be open to, to looking at how we've all been participated, but yeah. also to understand a lot of it is from the outside world too, that impacts our inability to see where we're at fault or have accountability. The second thing is to listen. Right. We listen to people. 
it's so hard mm-hmm. when you say, I know it all, I know it all, I know it all. And people, because I read, I read 25 books and people are like, <laughs> I live this. Can you just look at me for a minute and hear what I'm saying? And then the third thing would be to start looking at what are some possible solutions? So whether you bring somebody in or you decide to do it yourself, but I always recommend bringing in some kind of trusted advisor so that you don't move in the wrong direction because you're trying to guess your way through it because that can cause a lot more harm. And I've seen it over and over again, but really starting to take action towards an inclusive environment, company, company culture, all of those things, as you know, like they also improve the bottom line. That's yeah. not, that's not the reason to do it, but if that's what it takes to get people to do it, then I always say, well, does it help to tell you that there's stats that show that when you are inclusive and you create a safe culture, that yeah. it it creates positive impacts all around. And people are happier. Oh, you know, I think sure. it, it's there's just a greater sense of happiness and uh, I mean, listen, I am a forever student of this. I am always learning, I'm I'm always looking and I'm I I, I assume I'm never going to graduate from this, <laughs> right? So, but it's just important to also go in with the open-mindedness without any shame or any guilt and just say, okay, what do I need to look at? You know, how do I do this better? Because if you don't know, you can't change. If right. you don't, or if you're not willing to look, you can't change either. And right. you won't be building that. This, right. And it's all about energy too, right? Again, right. because people feel that. They feel like, am I in an inclusive environment or am I in a place where it doesn't feel so good? And here's um, what I can tell you, and you know this from being a woman who's probably been discriminated against at some point in your lifetime yeah we know when someone is insincere and discriminated and they're like oh i've never discriminated and we're like i just saw what you did right there and you don't even know what you just did yeah and so i think it's important and i love what you said about how you're and i'm paraphrasing that you know you're going to be a forever student in learning this i think that is a critical critical piece even me who does this for a living i am constantly learning and the thing i know more than everything else is that I will never know it all because there is so much to learn and yeah. to understand. It is my job to know as much of it as possible and to stay as current as possible. Yeah. So my most powerful experiences really have been with guardian angels, um, mm-hmm. whether it was meeting my primary guardian angel for the first time, Joshua, um, or it was just being a 19 year old who'd fallen in love for the very first time and been broken up with. And, right. and literally being in the backyard crying on the hood of my mother's Ford Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and literally hearing an angel say, you're going to be all right. You will be loved again. Oh, that's and so I'm, I remember being absolutely distraught and hearing that and the tears just stopped. It just stopped. Uh-huh. And I literally, I just stood up and was like, oh. And so it's, it's angels can help us in these significant, big, amazing, powerful ways. And they can also help us <clears throat> in small, beautiful, mm-hmm. kind ways. And the intensity of the love, the power of the unconditionalness of it makes neither one of those greater than the others because mm-hmm. they're both so designed to resonate with our souls whatever hasn't happened by the time of the full moon offer it up to spirit offer it up to the divine offer it up to source and somehow i was made to realize in india that this is actually the secret to manifesting so people think it's Mm. all about setting intentions They think it's all about making wishes. It's all about what you do at New Moon. And I honestly, after 20 plus years of doing this, I don't think it is. I think that that is about getting clarity and taking action. Mm -hmm. But somehow surrender is the secret source. But I always say source, S-O-U-R-C-E. It's the secret source of our manifesting power. You know, sometimes we have a goal but I believe that our goals and our dreams are evolutionary in nature. Yes. They end up take, encoded in them, they end up taking us on a journey. And sometimes we think that the goal is the goal, but sometimes the goal 
is the sort of spiritual carrot that takes us on yep. the journey so that we can learn the lessons and resolve what we need to resolve so that we can evolve to develop the mental, emotional, spiritual, psychological muscle, soul force, so that we can become the person that is really capable of fulfilling the dream and the vision. And so sometimes we get the goal, but we're not ready yet. And, and we get so attached to the goal, but the goal isn't the goal. It just takes us on the journey of becoming and then the real goal is over here. But if we don't take that journey, we don't evolve into the person that's capable of going over here. And, and so I see now that the entire journey was part of like burning out some of my ego, burning out some of my desires, learning to handle rejection, learn so many things I learned along the way. But I also see now looking back that, you know, sometimes when things don't manifest, it seems like the worst thing to the ego, but it's the greatest thing to the soul. And sometimes when things don't manifest, it's actually grace. It's the yeah. love of the universe that we're not able to see right now because we just want what we want and we want it now. And, and, and now I'm able to see that, like, thank God it didn't happen. <laughs>